I'm this far from the mic. And I'm this far from the mic. And together we are <clears throat> These Fars from, from the, the mic. mic. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to The Arch Plays with Starbuck Transom. And not a vampire. And uh, you've been uh, thinking about impossible meat lately, right? Or, or like, like Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat, Impossible Meat, yeah. like All the, uh, all the newest generation of meat substitutes. Yeah, like, uh, I think... It started with Burger King, and then I recently saw Carl's Jr. has a barbecue Beyond Meat Burger, too. And it's like, yes, please, let me eat my burgers in peace without having, you know, having it be cow. Okay. Um, so my original understanding of your beef thing is different than what you've said it is lately. Um, what was your original understanding? All right, so my original thought is that you were against the eating of meat for environmental reasons. I am. Because... That, that is a part of it. That is a part of it. Like, uh, that's why I'm specifically not eating beef. Like, I'm not, I've not gone full vegetarian because w- I will have, like, other kinds of meats, like chicken in particular, but not beef because of environmental reasons. Like, cows are one of the major, like, CO2 creators yeah, but I thought that there wasn't anything else to it. And oh, no. you didn't want to incentivize the creation of more beef, but if it was on offer, you would take it. Like, yeah, and I'm still like that right now, but I've always... I've always been, like, vegetarian-leaning and with an understanding that one day I will be entirely vegetarian. Like, I think it was in ninth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, when... I decided I was going to avoid meat entirely uh, during school lunches. Mm-hmm. I think that lasted for a few years, and then I might have given up. I can't remember. I mean, the school lunch aspect of it is a little bit different because school lunches are terrible. Well, I liked school <clears throat> lunches, and I specifically liked uh, their, their meat offerings as well. The thing was, that was the only food that I could actually control. Because there was no way of, like, going home and saying, hey, I'm vegetarian, don't give me meat. Like, we eat what we got when you're poor, man. Yeah. But, yeah. Even though, like, meat is more expensive as a, by a lot, as a a way to feed yourself. Yeah, but, like, we also had, like, uh, cheapo uh, chicken patties, too. That's where I developed my love for them. My love for trash. (laughs) <laughs> like so I've always been vegetarian leaning partly because I typically don't gravitate towards meat except for in very particular circumstances like meat just doesn't taste appealing to me like steak uh, someone else can have it like chicken tenders like they're fine they're the better kind of meat but still meh um, Alright, minor tangent. I'm not sure how I feel about the, the constant upskirt shot on Fee right here. Because it's like objectifying, but then again, she's also literally an object. She's the Master Sword. Oh. Mm. I just I, I wanted to I get the s- pun in there. I, I like. I do actually appreciate it when people um, in, include little details along, along those lines. As long as it's not an overt ogling. Like, this is not the camera doing it. It's just something that is happening. Anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah, I I wasn't thinking of it as necessarily being objectifying. Yeah, uh, that's a subject for another uh, episode, I think, though. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so so as I was saying, I don't don't gravitate towards meat anyways. It just doesn't taste that great to me. I'll typically go for more vegetarian-type options. But um, I've always, like... I've always had this thing also where if I think about like cows and chickens and like look at one and be like yeah I eat you and you're kind and like the the fact that like mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I literally have no like I don't think about that this thing that I am munching on was once alive like and you know Alive in a way that Scooter's alive to me. Like, when I think about that, then meat just sounds disgusting to me as well. Not just taste and, like, taste and texture-wise. It's just, like, I cannot justify this to myself. Hmm. Like. That's interesting, because my, uh, 
feeling of, of on me in general is that I want more connection to it as a living creature rather than less. Yeah, I know, and you're weird to me. Like, that that that's such that's so foreign. Like when you say that you want like like to feel like it's meat that's fighting you eating it. That's interesting. I'm, I don't mean fighting the eating part. I mean like, like um, well. I don't mean fighting the eating part in an intelligent way when I say that. Yeah, no. But I do want to get the feeling that it's the vital life essence of a creature that is becoming a part of mine. Yeah, that is extremely disconnected from what I feel. Yeah, um, it feels kind of like a like a unity with nature sort of thing. See, uh... When I think of unity with nature, I'm more along the lines of like a beast boy type uh, thought of it. Like how- Dude, he's... I've been most of those animals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kind of like uh, we're brothers. Like I don't eat my brothers. Hmm. I can see that. But what do you have to say to animals that eat other animals? Well, they don't have the brain power and the moral uh, compass to decide not to. Okay, so let's say there are uh, humanoid cats. Let's say, let's say you're talking to a cat furry. Well, cats are obligate carnivores. If they don't eat meat, they die. Well, I guess that's a bit of a different situation then. But because we humans can choose, like, we can survive without eating meat, then we got a bit of a different, uh, like, like, the, the consideration's different for us from creatures who literally need meat. I mean, technically we can get on without meat, but there's a lot of stuff that you do need, I guess, for optimum health. Yeah. That, that meat is so much better at providing because it, it's it's actually it takes some research to to get the your your exact nutrient needs from mm. from vegetarianism. But on the other hand, most people aren't getting their nutrient needs. Most people are eating like. Cheetos and yeah. Mountain Dew. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, even now I don't get the nutrients that I need from meat because the only time I ever eat meat to begin with is when we go out to eat. Mm -hmm. Like, and even then, it's specific to where we go out because I'll tend to go for a pasta of some sort, not so much mm -hmm. a meat based thing, unless, like, I, I, like, unless there's a veggie burger. Well, no, even then, it's not. Unless there's a chicken patty or, like, uh, chicken fingers I can have. Like, otherwise, I don't get my meat requirements, anyways. Well, I guess my point is with any restricted diet, the more restricted it is, the more careful you have to be about what you're not consuming. Yeah, that's true. Like, and, and I totally recognize that. It's not an easy thing to be vegetarian. Like, mm -hmm. not just, oh, well, I like the taste of meat. But I also, like, I also feel fine with that. Like, w when I think of my ideal self, I don't want to be any other way but a vegetarian. Hmm. I haven't figured out my feelings about going vegan yet. My brother went vegan for a time until, like, he had to stop because it was too expensive and he's too poor for it. Mm -hmm. But he still, like, ideally will go back to, like, a vegan diet once he has the funds to do so. Look at this perfect being. That, like, She, she I love is it. the sword dancer. I, I love everything about her. I want to be her. That is great. We should at some point play the game she's from. <laughs> Maybe. But right now, like, right now I'm not, like, being a vegetarian just because I like, haven't quite made that commitment yet. And I, excuse me, I'm not in a financial situation where I can support myself, like, getting uh, nutrients, uh, like, from other things other than meat. And I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet. But I'm starting down that path uh, just happening for environmental reasons by not consuming beef. So my thing with beef is right now is that I'm not going to financially support the beef industry. I'm not going to buy a beef like patty or burger or beef product for myself. Now, if someone yeah, just like, like just like the way that I am with um, with pigs, but for kind of the opposite reason. <laughs> I, I, 
Do you think it's funny at all? Well, that, hold like, on, hold on. I, I don't think I understand because I thought your thing with pig was that you just don't eat them because they're disgusting. Yes. If I don't want anyone to ever purchase pigs for me to eat because that economically incentivizes them to exist. Oh, I see. So it's the exact same thing as you, but for in reverse reasons. and yeah. out of malice. Yeah. I want all pigs, like, in my ideal future... The, it's a distant future, but in my ideal future, there are no living pigs anywhere. Uh, yeah, that's a little too extreme for me. But, like, like something that differs from you is that if, like, say you bought, like, you bought burgers and you offer me one, I won't turn you down because it's already bought and it was not bought with my own money. So that's fine. When, yeah. when I do eventually become a vegetarian, I will have to turn you down. Mm -hmm. But, like, right now, the reasons for not consuming beef are a monetary environmental reason. And so, like, if I'm out at, like, I don't know, McDonald's, I'm not going to get a cheeseburger. Gotcha, like, gotcha. I won't get a cheeseburger for myself. I can see that. Um, so, uh, I guess with... Oh, you know what sucks about my beef thing? What's up? I fucking love corned beef hash. Mmm. Like, I can't have it all the time because it's... I'm developing a grease sensitivity, and, like, if I eat stuff with grease, eventually it just becomes too disgusting and I can't finish it. But I love corned beef hash. I grew up on it. And mm. I, can't, I can't buy corned beef hash if I can't buy meat or uh, beef. And... It's gonna suck because, like, one day when I do eventually become a vegetarian, because then I won't be able to have roast, like, uh, corned beef, which is the best beef, like, uh, ever. It, it. Did you know? Actually, my dad was a vegetarian for a time, but he he stopped being a vegetarian because he just couldn't do it without corned beef. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, corned beef is actually a delicacy in my family. It it is the best. Yeah, all right. Funnily I, enough, uh, the Irish part of us is on my mom's side. <laughs> it's funny to me that that has an Irish associate. This is such a fucking cool weapon. I've never used this thing before. Um, You're like hoverboarding them, <clears throat> top hoverboarding them to death. Yeah. It, it's, it's funny to me that um, there is an Irish association with corned beef because that's not where corned beef is from. I'm sure it's not, and I'm not exactly sure why it has the Iris Association. I just know it does, and that's why I made the comment. Oh, I do know the history, actually. Oh, really? Um, so, you think uh, corned beef and cabbage, but it's it's not supposed to be corned beef and cabbage. It's supposed to be bacon and cabbage, the, a particular, oh. like, the British cut of bacon. Mm -hmm. And when there were a bunch of Irish immigrants in New York, the closest thing that they could get to the cut of bacon that they were used to was corned beef from jewish delis i see oh that's why okay my dad is jewish so that's why uh okay okay yeah i gotcha i gotcha i mean he might just like it because it's delicious because well, it's delicious well you know like that too i guess i guess but yeah well corned beef is delicious it is the best kind of beef there is fight me on it don't at me <laughs> my gosh i can't i can't remember like i don't know if there's a recipe around if my sister has it or something but my mom had this corned beef sandwiches recipe and it oh my god it was one of my favorite things she ever made that in her cookies like s tier food my mom wasn't a great cook but she did make those and i love them hmm. so another thing that stands out to me about the your attitude towards um meat and vegetarianism and etc the like this talk has has clarified the the other major difference between us mm -hmm. when it comes to food because i am very um i'm pretty anti-cruelty i will yeah. i'm currently still eating beef despite it being cruel to the cows because i just put myself first like Mm -hmm. I need some, I need protein, we are poor, this is the protein I'm buying. Mm -hmm. 
But besides that, um, oh, huh. Um, but besides that, um, if, if it were available to me, I would find a farmer who has like lots of cuts of beef. I would get like an entire thigh muscle or something, and um, oh, and like slice steaks out of it myself and cook those um like that that kind of thing yeah you 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 would uh personally make sure that your uh, meat source is not like being cruel to the meat that eventually gets to your plate yeah and i think that's fair i'm like you know that's another facet like less so than my uh i don't want to eat these creatures mm -hmm. but also like just thinking about what must have happened to them before they got to my plate. Yeah, and if you can if you can ensure that they l lived a, a decent life, at the very least, a pasture, not a caged life. Yeah, like you know, they weren't mistreated. They weren't uh, shoved into cages mm -hmm. with, like ten other of their brothers, and you know, beaten and stuff. Then, yeah, you know, like just quiet past your life until they eventually ended up on the chopping block. <laughs> I think I think that's fair. Again, it just doesn't get rid of my I don't want to like have to face this chicken and tell him like, yeah, I'm gonna eat you. Hmm. And it made sense for, for me, I think, because I'm a very uh like, I'm trying to find a way to say this. Like, I'm very softy. Yeah, You're I'm, softy. I'm, I'm a softy. I'm a nonviolent person, and I, I like being kind to things. And this is one part of me, like eating meat, that I can't really rectify with that part of me either. Cat might have bumped the mic. She wants to say hi. Hey, Scooter. Yeah. Scooter is joining us for this episode now. Yeah, she just got done surveying the outside world. Yeah, I could. I, I was remember you know Sin Sananda Scott. It's a it's a sh it's an anime that aired last season about like about surviving on an island and even just uh like them uh, eating the bugs is like I could not do that. Um, like poor bug it, bro. Poor bug bro. Yes, for real? poor bug bro. I literally can't hurt <clears throat> flies because poor fly bro. I, I I know he doesn't mean to be like you know such a pest. Like he's just living his life. You know this is just his lot, and I can't I can't exactly blame him for that. Like I don't think that's worthy of his death. All right, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Bugs have no moral status at all. But that's not how I feel. And that's all that matters. <laughs> I I recently saw a video by by some guy I can't remember his name. Um, the the title was "Feelings Don't Care About Your Facts." Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. It was a it was a lecture on what it was a tongue in cheek lecture on what it means to be post truth. Yeah. I I just. It's hard, okay? If I like, if I could snap my fingers right now and just Thanos all of the uh, all mosquitoes on Earth, I would do it in a heartbeat. You know, um, there. No, no. There are Isn't... creatures that primarily eat mos. Or there are creatures that eat mosquitoes, but there are no creatures that would go extinct if there were no more mosquitoes. I don't want to triple check that, but yeah. I think there's like actual, like, they're testing like a, a gene or something to effectively wipe out mosquitoes in certain areas, I think. Or that Oh, or, oh, uh, that's not a test. They've done that or like, successfully. Like, uh, they're, they're te like, they're testing it like out in the wild now. Like, like seeing how it affects everyone if it's that happens. It's being used as a as a pest control already in well, in areas that have uh, lots of mosquito borne illnesses. Yeah, that's specifically that why the they're mites. doing it. Yeah, yeah, they're specifically trying to do that to stop like spread of malaria and such. Mm -hmm. I think I wish 
I wish it was sooner, like, it was closer to when I heard the story, because it was on NPR, and they brought up something, uh, interesting about considering doing that, but I can't recall it now. I would be interesting to, interested to know what else there is to think about, other than the fact that it's, you know, uh, having a goal of extinction of a creature. I'm not sure. I'd have to look into it again. Because I just think of it as, this is an extinction that I can approve of. This is a genocide I can get behind. Yeah. Gosh, that sounds terrible. I, I, I so, I that much hate mosquitoes. Okay, well, I think that's, that about wraps up this episode. Um, let's see. Other aspects with meat. Um, now, even if you were to strip away all of my other reasons for, for wanting to eat meat, things like um, like uh, wanting to be connected to nature and like nutritional reasons, let's say those nutritional reasons don't exist. I get such a, like, it, it, it's so good. It tastes so good debatable. that I don't care. It tastes so good, that's debatable. I mean, this is going to be a personal taste thing, of course, yeah. but I I just love the taste of meat that much that let, let's say we're also in a um, pasture-raised or nothing situation, like all the cruelty is out of it. I am still going to Choose continue meat. eating meat. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to stop eating meat purely for moral reasons because I, I am valuing my enjoyment of meat more than the lives of the creatures that are giving me that meat. I was going to say, I'm not going to stop eating meat for moral reasons because I do not have morals. <laughs> morals don't care about your facts? I don't know. Uh, where's it, the commander? I'm not going to um evangelize or whatever the term is about vegetarianism i think that's a job for other and smarter people than me like i'm just more concerned like about myself right now mm. and making the choices that i think are right making decisions you can live with yeah yeah so what's it like knowing that knowing conclusively that this is my opinion on meat like how does that change how you look at me if at all i think like maybe like i don't think it's necessarily wrong i just think that our value set and how we look at things like animals are just different and so we really can't like my reasons cannot convince you and your reasons cannot convince me. Yeah, because one of the things that comes to my mind with is how could you kill this creature is, well, life just isn't that good. It's it's not so good that I'm going to not eat something, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, that's, that's something that just wouldn't convince me, but, like, I can see where you're coming from still. I think that's kind of the trouble with, like, vegetarians and vegans who try to get other people to make the choices that they do. Like, their reasons might not actually be good enough for the person they're trying to change yeah because they have a different order of priorities exactly and more in many cases it's more fundamental than what you would be willing to expect like you wouldn't believe that somebody could have priorities that are this different yeah like the thing that i just said about well life just isn't that precious yeah, and, like, to someone who has chosen to be vegetarian or vegan, that just sounds fucking bonkers, and you're more likely to have them, like, start calling you names and, like, ranting about you elsewhere, but effectively ghosting you 
than having them actually get in and discuss like why are your fundamental values that way and trying to like change in change it at that level oh can i just say that um the all the names that uh like hardcore militant vegetarians have for meat eaters are all awesome blood mouth carnist all of those things oh sound amazing I didn't know that they had such things. That's okay. I mean, I guess it's not surprising, but still. Jeez. I, I have yet to uh, encounter a name for, like, like a like a descriptive name for somebody that eats meat that I don't like. Yeah, that, that just sounds like metal, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, it like, sounds so metal. Like, again, it's going along with, well, only someone like you would be offended to be called that, yeah. but not someone who thinks it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's there's this book by a sci-fi guy called Stranger in a Strange Land that uh, is about uh, this guy gets is raised on Mars by native Martians. And the Martian values are very different from uh, from Earth values, and it the book is basically a love letter to to these invented Martian values, and also about how those particular like being a part of the Martian re cult religion will give you superpowers. Like, you become psychic and stuff, and eventually the, the main guy dies having uh, accomplished his mission, I guess. Um, and among those, part of the funeral practices of Martians is the loved ones of that person consume a small portion of that person's flesh. Hmm. This is my blood you drink. This is my body you eat. If you would remember me when you eat and drink. Yes. Basically that, yeah. I mean, it, it serves a different purpose. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. It's not quite religious per se. I mean, it literally is, but... Like, like but... it's not like... Uh... Mm -hmm. It's not like you you do communion like of wafers like fr from now on after you eat the person. Right. It it's only the literal act at shortly yeah. after the death of that person. Yeah. Um it's also like a free love society like um like everybody in their religion is is um like they they promote polyamory just writ large. I forget what the other details are. They don't they don't matter yeah. quite so much as yeah, the as no. the cannibalism point that I was making here. So I guess what you're saying is no meat is off the table. Eat the rich. It's only one thing they're very good for. Eat the rich. Eat the Take rich. one bite now, come back for more. Eat the rich. Uh, seize the means of production. Seize the means of factory of factory farming the rich. <laughs> I guess. Are we a cannibalism podcast now? Uh, that's the title of the episode. <laughs> well, even if, like, cannibalism was somehow made legal or okay, I'm still going to go vegetarian on it. Okay, now, let's say it wouldn't give you mad cow disease to eat humans. Because, by the way, feeding a creature it m more of its own species is how you get mad cow disease. Yeah. Um... Let's say there's no, there's nothing like mad cow disease that you could get from it. Would you eat humans? No. Why not? It, it's an extreme version of my, I don't want to tell this animal that I'm eating its brothers. Like, that is my emotional reaction taken up to a hundred. Huh. All right. No can do. I would worry a lot about, like, the production line and stuff, but well, yeah. I would totally eat people. Like, make synthetic people be eaten. Like, I don't I don't want to live, like, with the fear of getting eaten. Like, I don't know what the system for 
creating uh, human burgers would be like. No, thank you. But a manwich is a meal. <laughs> Sounds like it'd be like three meals. <laughs> All right. So for people who don't know, manwich is um, what you. It's another term for sloppy Joe. It's a particular brand of sloppy Joe, which is like, it's like this ground beef and gravy slurry. That sounds disgusting. It looks, it looks disgust. No, it looks delicious. I don't like the taste of it. I don't like sloppy Joes. Sloppy Joes, I like the idea disgusts me, but like as soon as I'm eating, it's like okay. I, I guess this is fine. I don't like how sloppy they are. And, you know, it's in the name, so mm-hmm. it's to be expected. Yeah, certain high meat content red sauces are basically just sloppy joes, but over pasta instead. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't like them either. <laughs> All right. So, I guess I guess the very last thing to be discussed is that that little sentence you got in there about synthetic meat. You would totally eat synthetic meat, though, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Like, I love my burgers. Like, you know, like... Yeah, uh, and that's, that's kind of what we got into this on, in the first place from. Like, yeah. meat substitutes and stuff. Please, yes. Thank you, Impossible Burger King Burger. I fucking love Burger King Burgers, but I can't have them until now. And I, it tastes just like a Burger King Burger. My problem with it is that it tastes like a Burger King Burger. Yeah, well, that's that's your problem. I like it. I love it. Burger like, King isn't food. It, it's food to me, because I like trash, remember? I thought we already discussed this. Yeah. Yes, please, more synthetic meats. Yes. Uh, I love burgers, but I just can't have them, because most places don't have vegetarian burger options. Like, that's why I eat so much chicken, because, like, you know, because I can't have the beef. I don't want the beef. I just want, like, fake beef. I thought of it as as I was talking about, but yeah, like, I would love synthetic meat. Okay. Um, How much do you know about the currently existing meat substitutes and where Uh, they come from? It's like corn based. There's some of them that are corn based, there's some of them that are, uh, that actually are nutritionally equivalent to meat. Uh, they're, They're made with, like, Mushrooms. I'm not really caring much about the nutrition. I just like, I just want the taste. Well, I am interested in the nutrition. There's, there's a place called, or there's a company called Corn with a Q, which is just the most pretentious, intentionally difficult thing I've ever seen. Yeah. This, this burger's made of corn. Not corn. Corn. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ugh. Yeah, I would be also interested in, like, nutritionally equivalent, imp- like, fake meat. Right now, I'm just celebrating the fact that fake meat is becoming popular. Yeah. Um, Let me have my junk food in peace. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll, I'll give the lot of it a soft upvote. Yeah, well, you don't need to eat it. Oh, I just, I, I'm the only one who needs to eat it. Yeah. Do you have any particular thoughts about people who say, like, you fucking coward? Why don't, just, like, stop trying to eat meat as a vegetarian. You should, like, if you're going to go vegetarian, just eat the good vegetarian dishes instead of having worse versions of meat dishes. You fucking idiot. Like, there's a reason why, like, everyone's not a vegetarian. Not everyone's a vegetarian because meat fucking tastes good. <laughs> that okay? is the reason most people are not vegetarians. Yeah, you, yeah, like my dad, like, cause, uh, like, corned beef tastes great. Well, how do you convince the people who, like, are not vegetarians for that reason? Make fake meat. Make vegetarian dishes that taste like meat. Then they have no excuse to not be a vegetarian. Mm-hmm. I, I furthermore have to say that, um, everybody who's like, like fighting against vegetarianism as though it's like a threat somehow yeah those people are all universally and uniformly pathetic i hate all of them just why why is it such a big deal to you yeah like yeah there are annoying vegetarians but like 
being against vegetarianism as a concept, as though it's like a negative force in the world. What the fuck? Yeah. Like then, unless you, unless you are a shill for the factory farming industry, I don't understand. You're just turning eating meat into a religion. Exactly. And TBH, not 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 that great of a religion. Yeah, it's dumb and bad, and I hate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I think that subject is fully tapped out. Okay. Scooter wants to go, so I'm going to put her up. We'll see you later. All right. Next time on tap. Yeah. Yeah, Scooter is very antsy. Yeah, I, she, I, I watched her try to jump. Yeah, and there. I caught her. <laughs> and it was like, no, we're not doing it. All right. I'm going to finish out this level, because, you know, whatever. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. There they are, standing in a row. Big one, small one, some as big as your head. All right. Do you have a Do you have another subject? Because I did the last, like before this, I did the entire previous session. 